Hi Booktube, it's Emily here and let me apologise if you've never heard me apologise for this in a video before. You've got a really boring, dreary, dark background here. Um, as I've said before, I am currently refurbishing my house from top to bottom. So pretty much everything is bare plaster as you can see behind me and I don't have very exciting backdrops. But this is a new dark and dreary backdrop. I'm just chasing the light around the house today trying to find a window with some natural light to film next to. So, Today I'm going to show you my June book haul, which is an unintentional book haul. I didn't think I was going to buy anything in June. I had so many books for my birthday and I've got so much already on my shelf to read that I really didn't need any more temptations to spend time reading rather than getting on with the rest of life. But life being what it is, um, I didn't have a great month and sometimes the best therapy for me when I'm not having a good time is to go and do some secondhand book shopping. So pretty much everything that you'll see in this video is secondhand with kind of one and a half exceptions and I'm just going to get straight in and tell you about the books. So the first one that I bought is an author that I've heard a lot about on booktube and I've never read any of and I really don't know why she seems really up my street so that is Ali Smith and I chose The Accidental. I was really excited because I went into my local Oxfam specifically looking for this book and they actually had exactly the one that I wanted in quite good condition. How often does that happen? So The Accidental, if you haven't heard of it, is a story about a family of four who are holidaying in Norfolk and this kind of stranger infiltrates their household, this girl called Amber and she behaves quite differently towards each of them and interacts with them and it kind of changes them over the summer. It sounds like a really straightforward concept but the way that it is executed I think is quite experimental and interesting and even just flipping through the first couple of pages you can see that there are some quite random elements. So for example I'm quite liking this random photo of a sheep with electricity pylons at the front, um, presumably representing Norfolk. That is pretty much what it looks like for our transatlantic friends. Um, it's prefaced by some wonderfully random and seemingly unconnected quotes by different authors and poets and things at the front and I, I just love that kind of thing seeing how it eventually fits into the story and then not the preface itself but the first chapter starts in the middle of a sentence so that's interesting we'll see how that pans out and I'm really interested to see whether I find this approach interesting or kind of gimmicky as it goes along and um, really excited to get to this one. The second book that I bought is Moral Disorder by Margaret Atwood and I've not read a lot of Margaret Atwood before. I've read the Penelope ad and I've read about half of The Handmaid's Tale and um, wasn't feeling it at the time so that's definitely on my TBR list to get back to. But one of the things that you hear about Margaret Atwood is that all of her books are really different from each other. She dabbles in lots of different styles and genres and I just thought it would be interesting to try something different. So this describes itself as a collection of short stories woven into a novel or a novel split into a collection of short stories and I've quite enjoyed books that take that sort of approach recently. So for example, um, I've read A Visit from the Goon Squad earlier this year and I really loved that and re more recently Cloud Atlas. And both these books weave together these seemingly unrelated stories into a whole that is greater than its parts. So I'm excited to read something else that is in that kind of vein. So the final book that I bought that trip was on a real whim and that is All Families Are Psychotic by Douglas Coupland. And I've never really come across this author or this book before but I was just browsing the shelves and I was kind of taken by this concept. It's very simply um, a story of a family coming together on a momentous day. In this case, it's the day that one of them is going into space on a NASA space shuttle. And it's all of the wonderful eccentric members of this family coming together. And uh, it just sounds really funny. All of the blibs are about how humorous it is. It just seems like it might be a really nice light, um, but hopefully also quite touching summer read. Um, I was also kind of seduced by the cover, which you won't be able to see on the camera, I don't think, but it's got this kind of corrugated surface. So although it's not the most beautiful of covers, I think it might be quite a nice volume to hold while you're reading it. The next book I bought is something a bit different and quite a departure for me. And I was motivated by the fact that I'm doing the Book Riot Read Harder Challenge this year. And one of the categories of books that you have to read is a self-help book. And that's one of the ones that's really been making me scratch my head. There's nothing that kind of jumps out at me 
as, oh, I definitely want to read a book on that subject or I've heard a great recommendation of this because I don't really find that people talk about self-help books that much on booktube or in real life. So I went on a day trip recently with my family to York and we went to quite a few lovely little independent bookshops while we were there and I was super self-restrained. I didn't buy anything at all while I was there, but I did flip through this book and then I did that horrible death of the bookshop internet thing where I went and found a second copy on the internet afterwards. And I feel really bad because one of my resolutions this year was to try and support independent bookshops more and buy things in the shop rather than on the internet. So I should have just did the less and bought it full price when I was there. I'm really sorry little York bookshop, you were lovely. I'll try and find your website to link down below so that if anyone is in the area you should definitely go and check it out. It had a really interesting selection of books. Anyway, the book that I chose was how to Be Alone by Sarah Maitland. And this jumped out at me, partly because it's just a really attractive book. It's quite a small volume. It has these lovely rounded edges and this very eye-popping orange color. And it's also got that lovely rubbery kind of surface um, that makes it really nice to hold. And it's nice and short, so it's not a big time commitment to read this as part of the challenge. But the reason that I was drawn to this one in particular, because there is a whole series, I think, of these little School of Life books that are published by Pam Macmillan. But How to Be Alone just struck me as an interesting subject because I've recently started to live alone for the first time in my life. I've always previously lived in house shares or with family. So I just thought it'd be really interesting Interesting to take a step back and look at that through what sounds like quite a philosophical perspective, looking at the advantages of alone time and societal attitudes towards it. And I'm not sure that there's going to be a huge amount that's kind of really fresh and new in this book, but I think it's something that is really worth thinking about if you are inclined to introversion, because that can so often be seen as being a very negative thing. And I think that the author might have some really interesting ideas about how you might connect differently to the world and to nature and to other people when and you're also spending time alone. So watch this space, I'll let you know what I think when I've read it. So the next one I bought at a local summer fair, there's lots of those around at this time of year, and they had a stall of books where paperbacks were only 50p, so I think it was pretty restrained that I only bought one, and that one was Bel Canto by Anne Patchett, in an absolutely perfect unread paperback edition. And I've heard people say lots of positive things about this on BookTube, but no one actually described the plot. And it sounds really interesting, a very unusual mix of a kind of thriller, but also a romance and also some dry humour in there. If you haven't heard of it, it is about a hostage situation in an embassy in a South American country. And it's kind of about the developing relationship between the people who are incarcerated in this embassy. And it sounds like it will be quite emotional, but also quite a page turner, quite fast paced. So I think that could be a really enjoyable combination. So the next two books I bought in a secondhand bookshop, which is really near where I work. So it's perilously easy just to wander down at lunchtime and pick something up off the shelves. And I'm afraid that's what I did. So the first thing that I picked up is Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album. And this is, I think, quite a well-known book about a young man who goes to visit, I think, maybe a former teacher or religious mentor who is dying of a terminal illness. So he goes and spends time with him on Tuesdays and they talk about life and mortality and philosophy. And it's definitely a thoughtful book rather than a plot-based one, but I think that could be interesting. And I know that this book divides opinion when you have a look at it on Goodreads. There's a lot of five-star reviews and a lot of one-star reviews. And I'm excited to find out which camp I fall into, whether it's the people who think it's very kind of saccharine and sentimental, or those that are really moved by it. And some people obviously find this a really life-changing book. I'd actually heard of this book a long time ago because my aunt really likes it and she recommended it to me, I think after she saw the stage play version of it. But I was reminded of it recently because Veebke from One Book One Review was talking about Mitch Album in her Be A Good Human tag video and so that convinced me that it might be worth really giving him a try. Then the final second hand book that I got from this haul is A History of Danish Dreams by Peter Hoek. I'm not quite sure how the little cross thing on the O affects the pronunciation, so I'm sorry if I've mangled that. I read Miss Smeller's Feeling for Snow by the same author last year, which I think is probably his most famous book, and I really, really enjoyed kind of the first two thirds of it. The end kind of went a little bit astray for me, but the writing was so compulsive and readable, and I really wanted to read something else by him, so I've actually already picked up one of his other novels. But I couldn't resist this, which is his first novel, and it's about four families from very different social backgrounds in Denmark over the course of the 20th century. So it sounds like it has quite a wide scope. 
I think like a lot of British people, I've got quite into Danish TV in the last few years. So things like Borgen particularly, I really loved and the killing and the bridge. So I'm quite interested in Denmark from that perspective. I also have quite a lot of Danish family history myself. And my dad and I have this kind of plan in the next couple of years to go to Denmark and see lots of the places that were related to them. So I'd really like to do a bit more reading up about Danish history and culture before then. And I think this is going to be a good place to start. Now, the final book that I have to share with you today is the only one that I bought full price. And when I say full price, I was buying a book as a present for somebody, which was in the buy one, get one half price offer at Waterstones. So I kind of felt obliged to buy another one because, you know, why would you not? And I found a book that I'd been wanting to read for a really long time and I've been waiting for it to come out in paperback. So I was really excited. And that book is Yes, Please by Amy Poehler. Now, I don't think I need to explain very much about this book because pretty much everybody has already read it. But I really like Amy Poehler. I love her on Parks and Rec. I think she's a really interesting presence on the internet and in discussions about women in comedy. And I'm just really excited. I think this is going to be a very fun read for the summer. I'm also really pleased because I was a bit worried that when the paperback came out, it wouldn't do justice to the very kind of visual nature of the book that everybody talks about. But even though it's a paperback, it is just very beautifully produced. It has very thick, high quality pages and it's all still beautifully in colour and very kind of graphically designed. It's got the nice rubbery finish as well and it's just a very luxurious paperback book. It's very heavy so it's probably not great to kind of beat your holiday reading but I'm really excited to finally read it. And then the final thing that I have is not a book, it's actually a magazine and it was a bit of a whim purchase. I saw this described on Jean's Bookish Thoughts and she was talking about a Penguin Classics dinner that she'd been to and in the goodie bag they were all given copies of this new Penguin magazine called The Happy Reader. So I just kind of floated over to their website as you do and decided to subscribe. It's really quite an affordable subscription. It's a quarterly magazine so for four issues I think it was £8. And £2 an issue is just so much cheaper than any magazine that you're going to buy in a newsagent these days. And I think I was sold on it really because I used to love magazines as a child especially when you were going on a train journey and you got to go and pick what you were going to read on the train. And I've just been really disappointed as an adult with the selection of magazines available to match my interests because there isn't really anything that jumps out at me from the shelf. But this is so much my cup of tea. It's unbelievable. So let me show you. I'm just going to cover up my dress here. It comes in this lovely high quality envelope which has the logo of the magazine on the back here. And then when you open it up, I just think there's something very distinctly penguin about this, about the way that it's designed and the typeface and everything. And each edition of this talks to one famous reader. So in this case, it's Kim Gordon. And then it takes one book in Penguin's collection and it uses that as a starting point for the rest of the articles in the book. So in this case, it's a book that I haven't actually heard of before, which is called The Book of Tea by Kakuzo Okakura. So lots of the articles are about kind of tea in literature and in lots of different contexts. There's something about Japanese culture. That just sounds really, really interesting to me. I'm a massive tea addict and very stereotypically Yorkshire in that way. I can't get by without my cuppa, so I'm going to really enjoy reading this. I've had a flick through. It's really beautifully presented. It has lots of colour pages and then lots of sort of beautifully typeset articles and snippets. I just really like the fact that um, although it's published by Penguin, it's not really trying to sell you anything. I mean, I might end up wanting to read the book that it's talking about, but we'll see what happens. I just think it's so beautifully produced that it is probably something that I'm going to want to hang on to as a kind of item in my collection. It even comes with its own lovely little bookmark that matches it so you can keep your place. And I'm going to really enjoy putting on the kettle and enjoying this at my leisure. So that is all of the reading material that I got this month. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know if there's anything that you think I should start with. Let me know if you have a bit of a problem with secondhand book buying as well. And if you've got any good ways to control your impulses in that direction. And hopefully I'll see you soon in my next booktube video. Bye.